Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of More to the Story. We are the moles. Yeah. I'm Ferret. I'm the kid. To hear. <laughs> What's wrong, babe? Nothing. What's wrong? You got beefs? Mm -mm. He do. Ooh. He do. He fuck not him. going mid. Fuck him up, Mo. Hey. You're okay. cursing in front of a minor. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, the braids? <laughs> okay, so today, y'all, we let's let's just get into it because I got a lot of questions about this one. I want to hear a lot of what y'all got to say. Okay, y'all ready? Uh huh. I, 16 female, attend a local university through a dual enrollment program in my calc class. Oh, nope. In my calc class two, <laughs> calc two class, words is hard for me, even though they're right in front of me. I met this guy, 20. Which on Tuesdays. Male. <laughs> <laughs> oh like put something in, what they call it, the lower third. So it just scrolled it's up. Hard. <laughs> Tuesday, it's like you're the infomercial font. Right. Ugh. Oh, my God. Order now. We'll double your offer. Um, I met this okay. guy, 20 male, 16 female, met this guy, 20 male. And towards the end of the semester, we really hit it off. I'm talking, texting um, for eight hours straight, falling asleep on FaceTime, meeting Objection. up between our classes. Immediately. Immediately. You said what? Objection. Immediately. <laughs> now and walking minor, everywhere around campus. And my like, a minor, minor joke. It's probably a minor. minor. <laughs> <sighs> Sometimes you gotta hop out and show this. Ooh, fuck it up. <laughs> Two weeks into this, I went over to his house where he lives alone off campus. Right. Three weeks into this, we cuddled on his couch and he was touching my thighs and waist and stuff, but no further than that. A few days later, we went for a drive and he asked me to be his girlfriend. He came over to my house, met my parents, etc., and we had our first kiss in my bedroom. And he was touching my chest, initially over my shirt, then under my shirt. She is detailed. Um, he claims he's a virgin. I like how she used the word claims. Okay, don't editorialize. He claims <laughs> he's a virgin. He's also from a really small town, fewer than 3,000 people, and that he never kissed anyone before me. They all related in it. So I've been chalking the fast pace up to us both being inexperienced and curious. We it's said not at all. <laughs> we set boundaries after that and had a talk about sex, which he was very respectful of. We set red zones, which are growing area, and yellow zones, which are my chest area. We go on dates and stuff like museums and go biking and hiking. And he's met my parents, etc. Really want to drive that home. Um, he heavily dislikes my parents, given that I'm not allowed to go over to his house, not allowed to go out after seven o'clock. Not allowed to go to over his house again. Not allowed to be home alone with him again. or have the door closed. His parents are Christian fundamentalists, and he completely cut contact with them after he turned eighteen. He says that if my parents make me so miserable, I could cut contact with them too. He's constantly asking me where the relationship is going, and he says he wants to have a long-term relationship with me. Is it over? Is it over? <laughs> no. He's probably a groomer. <laughs> like, facts though. Yeah. So the the title, show me the title of this is actually called Am I Being Groomed? <laughs> I didn't yeah. want to start with that because I didn't want y'all to. It was like, but if you're yes, asking that question, yes. <laughs> um, Don't even have to say the ages. Yes, in the story. Okay. We end up doing a lot of cuddling when we're together and making out. It's very fun and I'm totally into it, but my parents and friends say that we are moving way too fast. And my parents have begun to think I'm being groomed. Yeah. Thoughts? Yes. Really? <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> immediately. Like 16, 20, immediately. No. Wow. You, nigga. Are, you are a junior in high school. He's in college. Like, in normal, if you weren't in the program, that's how it would be. Like, he'd see you as a child. He should still see you as a child. Even if that's why he ain't tried nothing, because if he has sex with you, he got to go to jail. As soon as you turn 17, I'm a baby girl. Soon as you say when he on your ass. Ah, well. I'm a virgin. Uh oh, there's, there's more. more. <laughs> I told him a few <laughs> days after we met that I was 16 before any sort of romantic intent between us began. Mm. He has not tried to have sex with me. The age of consent in my state is 16. He does not drink or do any sort of drugs and is vehemently against any ever doing that, against ever doing it, even when he comes of legal age. None of his other relationships have been with people younger than him. Mm. Part of his dislike of my parents stems from the fact that they placed a microphone in my room a few years ago and won't let me take it out. And that they will ever so every so often remove the door from my room okay <laughs> there's a line going on there's a lot of layers yeah. so the parents are a little bit overprotective borderline abusive because why are you removing your child's door that's you almost had yours taken off you was younger you weren't in your teens this is when you were like that's also when eight nine ten you before your you know Character development. <laughs> that would have been borderline abuse. She's like, that was before you grew up and got mature. Is <laughs> basically what she said. <laughs> so. She had to learn, y'all. <laughs> Anyways, back to the story. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's borderline abuse. So, he, he kind of has, uh, he's kind of ran with the dislike, but cutting him off. Hey. Fuck your, all that. Your parents are crazy. If this little girl is going to be trying to have this boy over and thinking that y'all going to be in y'all room, you talk to this boy. I can't stop you from talking because even if you go to school, you can talk to him via the internet or whatever fuck. So I can't really stop you. All right, cool. I'm going to make it uncomfortable. Because even though the legal age is 16, you're not old enough to really consent to that type of shit. He's still three years older than you. He's seen three more years of life than you. You don't know his plans. All his other relationships. He hasn't had any other relationships with anybody younger. That's because you're not in a relationship. You're being groomed, little girl. You're getting taken for a ride. I think it should. I don't feel like the door needs to be removed. I think it should be like a Stranger Things with uh, Hops where he's like, oh, don't close the door when you're in there right. alone with him. Right. If you close the door, then I'm going to say something. I'm coming there, open the door. Yeah, that's a good. doesn't matter what y'all are doing. I'm coming in with an axe. <laughs> I'm taking that's how I'm opening the door with that. You giving um yes. big Mike Lari. <laughs> I'm giving I'm giving the shining. <laughs> little pigs. Little pigs. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> yeah, that's so you guys, there's a little more. You ready? Heavy sigh. He has never explicitly and repeatedly encouraged me to cut off my cut my parents off. He has mentioned it a few times, but it was generally in reference to us talking about his childhood and family life. He and my dad mutually heavily dislike one another. My dad thinks he's disrespectful. Encour he encourages me to break laws and that I could do far better than this scumbag. I was telling boyfriend about some of the crazy, crazier than the Mike and no door stuff that my parents have done and he just said if they make you that miserable you could cut them off once you turn 18. he has not talked about me moving in with him or relying on him for any financial support okay i believe he treats me well he does not pressure me does not get jealous does not attempt to isolate me from my extracurricular activities and my friends does not belittle me or patronize me, studies with me, helps me with homework and projects, encourages me in my hobbies and sports. 
He is happy to end things when I have schoolwork or other activities that need to take priority over talking to him. He doesn't like my parents because of a few incidents where they have criticized him to his face because of their rules and because of this one time that my dad kicked him out of our house for a minor incident over eating dinner together. Okay, so it's still very weird. For a twenty-year-old to be talking to a sixteen-year-old, even if got it is, mm -hmm. yeah. even if it is the age of consent, who that's still that's a teenager, grown adult person, like. Oh my god! Did you see the new new episode of Power Rangers? Bitch, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you go to Power Rangers? I don't know what sixteen-year-olds watch. Me, because that's a perfect example. Like you don't know what they watch. You're twenty, bro. Mm -hmm. You're twenty. Like, what what are y'all talking about? Legos? Well, I've got both had like a learning disabled uh, um, what is it? disability. Disability, excuse me. And y'all weren't like y'all were both operating on maybe a lower level of understanding and education or maturity, like that possibly, right? But even then, it's still like, nah, bruh. I don't believe it's a virgin. So me either. Me either, and I like how she said he claims he's a virgin, but uh, what? How can you check? There's no. Who cares? You gotta check the rings on his penis. <laughs> <laughs> gotta cut it off. Yeah. Check the ring. Cut gotta it check, off and check the ring. Gotta check under the mushroom. <laughs> oh I hate it here. Um, but so, what's the youngest you've ever gone? you've ever dated or maybe i should ask you what's the oldest because you like <laughs> you like older women's when you were a minor how much older did you go Ooh, illegal <laughs> shit illegal shit illegal shit i was definitely groomed <laughs> i was de not even kidding uh -huh. i was definitely groomed uh -huh. and uh at the time i was on my own so it wasn't nobody to like really tell me no. She should have known better. Mm -hmm. But I also look older than my age. But she also knew how old I was because of the people I was hanging with. I'm about to say you've never looked old for your. I know, age. but I mean, I had facial hair at, in the eighth grade. So yeah, you can still have a child face and just have facial hair on it because of jeans. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just, just saying, like, in my like, opinion, school. I've known you <laughs> yeah. for years, and I've never thought you looked older Not, than what you were. Yeah, but I mean, like. <laughs> I looked older than my peers at the time, and I was more mature than my peers because mm -hmm. I had to, I had to work, mm -hmm. and so. But then also, if you were older than your peers, you still wouldn't be illegal. So. I know that. I, all I'm saying is, <laughs> I'm not making excuses for it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying at yeah. the time, like a lot of people was like, "You working? You got a car? You don't stay with your parents?" Mm -hmm. That was just you know the 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 type of questions I was asked because of the way I, how I looked and how I moved. Mm -hmm. But it still wasn't right. But you no, know, I was definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Um, <coughs> the kid has very strong thoughts on age gaps and whatnot, especially when it pertains to younger people. Yeah, you gotta you gonna elaborate because you you have like strict rules about it. Oh, for me, <laughs> if it was even when I was in like elementary school, middle school, I was like, I'm not having a crush with nobody grade younger, grade below me. Really? Or a grade like two below. Two mm -hmm. below. Two below is too much. Grade below is eh. It's either same grade or, or above. And that's stuck to that. <laughs> the one time I did have a crush on somebody that was a grade below me, he said something like racist. And so I was like, mm, no. <laughs> and then he tried to deny it like a year later. I was like, mm, I remember. <laughs> I remember. I remember, buddies. Yeah, so I think that um, Baby Girl got got two things to really think about because yeah. the, also the relationship with the parents. Because that's a mic. I forgot about the microphone. I was focused on the door. The microphone. What do you it's mean? like I can't even masturbate in peace. You're going to be listening to me? That's weird. I wonder but like, I wonder what caused that. Because I don't feel like the parents just was like, right. we should put a mic in her room to see but what's like, going on. I don't wait, wait, let me finish. I wonder is she's not giving us all the backstory. Like maybe she ran away with a guy before. Maybe she got caught with a couple guys in the bedroom she or a couple said, people in the. Oh no, wait, that wait, was your me... first kiss. Okay. 
listen, the same way she said he claims he's a virgin, she could have omitted some stuff that she didn't post in this story because it wasn't pertinent, in her opinion, to mm -hmm. this story. I don't see parents just out of the blue just putting a microphone I in somebody's know. room. Maybe. It, it very well could mm -hmm. be. But it sounded like it was some other stuff going on that she didn't let us in on that would have like moved them. Like if that, because I feel like if she was like, my parents have always been strict, that would have been in the story if it was that was that if that was the case. Mm -hmm. She didn't start like I've I've always had overbearing parents or strict parents. They've always kept you know mm -hmm. our helicopter mm -hmm. parents. They've always kept a short leash on me. So I'm like none of that was given. And usually when people have overbearing parents like that, or if they're not close with their parents like that. They say that multiple times, the same way she stated it multiple times. I'm still a virgin. Um, he got into it with my parents. She hasn't said anything about her relationship with the parents, which leads me to believe that it's not been like that. Like she don't feel the same way he feel about her parents, but it could be. She might have just not said it. Because I was wondering, I mean, I can't see any reason at all to put a microphone. Who the fuck? I'm not going to be listening. In my child's room. Um, and they got her lobbed up. They're like, she come home from school, she got to put on the lobbyer. Put the mic <laughs> on her. She, she drop her keys and be like, Tessa, Tessa, what to <laughs> read you loud and clear, baby girl. I just walk over to the mic and just fart in it all the time. That's all you're gonna hear is farts. <laughs> Slubber Toots is on the job, <laughs> Slubber Toots on the case. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it's still like a so a boundary to put a yes. microphone in. regardless of what she does there's other solutions for that that part um the microphone is still messed insane. with me more <laughs> thank you mr producer i just don't want to get cut off it's pissing me off <laughs> not your arm oh no I hate it here. <laughs> That's why my face be looking like this. They don't, predict, they don't appreciate production value, guys. <laughs> okay. So I want to hear in the comments, y'all. The comments, guys. Because I have mul multiple questions. Have you ever been groomed or are you realizing now in society, fuck you, <laughs> um, that you have groomed someone? Oh. I don't think anybody wants to talk. No, about because that. sometimes you you don't you don't realize it. And I feel like that stuff back and then wasn't, especially back in our day. Yeah, like I, there was so many chicks getting picked up by older guys I was at my high school, <laughs> and nobody batted an eye at them. They actually encouraged like, oh, he got she got her a working man. Look at him picking her up and he buying her stuff like that. But that at that time, if you're an eighties babies or late seventies mm -hmm. babies. That was a common thing. Yeah. It, it was really crazy. Was, it was yes. the norm. It was and, and and it was like like as guys in high school, when you see that, you know, like, oh man, I'm a grow up, give me a call like that. It kind of set the precedence for to be somewhat of a groomer slash pervert slash just like, <laughs> like you want in in some guy's mind, they wanted somebody young who was impressionable to kind of teach her how to be a woman. Ew. Not even so much for like the Manipulate you type thing, but like, hey, I've been in a couple of relationships. You know, how this is you, how as a young man gonna teach me as a young girl how to be a woman. You know what it is? Because they were looking at they were looking at it as like, I'm gonna teach you how to serve your man, like because how to make his plate. Yeah, this is how, my mom, to, this is how <laughs> I saw my mom do it with my dad, like that type of stuff. I want my mother yeah. romantically. <laughs> that is that is yeah, that was just to say that's a, that's the thing sometimes with some people too. But yeah, some guys um, like, and then there are guys whose parents encourage like, yeah, get you a young girl, man. You can try to fuck with these chicks. All we got to do is a young girl. And, you know, you show you her how you want to love. You heard somebody say that? Hell yeah. In the barbershop and all of that in the same room? Absolutely. I heard dudes saying that. Now, I always like older women. Because older women had good snacks at their house. For their kids. <laughs> I'm not eating all the snacks. I just want a little something to show them. Hell walking around with the baby's gushers in his hands. <laughs> you got that right. You got that right. And I absolutely would do it if they was up when I got there. Like, why are you still up? Why is he still up? It's 930. He's in the second grade. Put this nigga to bed, bro. What are we doing? All right, I'm finna fuck these gushers up. <laughs> Go eat the last one. No, because you supposed to be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> He's good, too. Face ass. 
I'm so happy I took you off the streets. I, You're a fucking terrorist. <laughs> I, I didn't like the years I was. You're welcome. Alive in. Alive in. I, I like the years I was here. <laughs> alive in. A lot. So much has changed. Oh, the, God oh, bless. Go so much has changed. God bless. In the 20, 30 years that you know I have been sexually experienced. Um, now. Because. Like I, like we said, that was that was that was the norm, mm -hmm. and nobody it really batted was. an eye at it. Like nobody batted it. Like even the lady I'm talking about, I went around her family. They knew I was 15, and she is almost twice my age. She was almost twice my age. Um, yeah, and I remember I was in high school, and my first real boyfriend in high school, I was like 14, he was 18, yeah, and it was like the norm, my mom was concerned about it, him being so old, and this nigga already had a kid, um, wow. but she, all it was also like, I know, they go to school together. Mm -hmm. I can't stop her. All I can do is your mama has always had an affinity for, for for young old niggas in bands. Okay, yeah. if a, if a nigga had a band, your mama was like, "That's that's my king right there." She like she liked vehicles with curtains. If they had curtains him. and a lot of change in the coin tray. If Close he had if he had over four dollars in that coin tray, he ain't had to say nothing else. He'd be like, "Hey, let me tell you something. I got almost five dollars in this coin tray." She was. Oh. <laughs> it was that easy. It was that easy. Bands of pickup trucks. Oh, it was that easy. <laughs> what I better hair so. He had to keep introducing himself because he ain't had no game, and I kept ignoring him. Ooh. <laughs> you could have taken a lesson from one of them old niggas. Ooh. Well, I mean, when I finally did get your number, I had about four dollars of change in my pocket. I walked up. I was like. <laughs> Go to your room. Okay. Oh, yeah. The other question I have, we're bringing it back, is as a parent or like the the microphone, like the the taking the door off things, what type of punishment? Yeah, it's back here. What? You think they're about taking off doors? Why? Because they can all like, go support it. I take off my child. I don't do it all day. I just, <laughs> Like, is that a thing we do in the black community? We take off doors? Invasion of privacy, yes, a lot in the wow. black community. So I um read this other story real quick before I move on. There we go. Um, this girl was like, my mom goes in my room under the guise of cleaning it, but she told was that the me last one? No. Oh. But she um she came like the mom came to the daughter and was like, You don't use the journal I gave you a year ago. And it's like, how you know mm -hmm. you opened it because you were hoping to find out something like just that. Mm -hmm. I have never I know, because how you gonna know if I use it or if you don't open it? Exactly. <laughs> and the the girl said told her mom like if I wanna keep something secret, why would I write it down? People are gonna read it. Like you, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like but I've just that invasion of privacy. I've like, do so your many, kids have privacy? I've Did seen you? So have many privacy? tweets of people like of uh, mostly teenagers um, posting screenshots of like their texts from their mom. And it's like a picture of their vibrator or something, mm -hmm. and they're like, "What is this? We're having a talk when you get home, like angry." And it's like, "Why are you looking at my? Why are you looking for this? Why is it not okay?" Also, I feel and, like I feel. I, I completely understand both sides of it. I'm gonna be honest with yeah. you, yeah, because obviously it is a gross invasion of privacy. But a lot of parents are old school, or they were raised by old school mm, parents. Yeah. They're like, anything in this house is my property. Any space in this house is my property. So while I respect you for the most part, and not going there while you're in there just busting your room, if I want to go in your room, I go in your room because mm -hmm. I pay for this room. So I understand on the parent side, but I also understand on the kid side. But you also have to remember, we are in America where we have the most mass shootings in schools and public places. A lot of times parents don't 
get involved. They aren't nosy. And this type of stuff goes under the radar. If you go in your child's room cleaning up under that guys and you find a nine millimeter or assault rifle or something like that, you may have just saved the school. You may have just saved people in the grocery store. So I understand both sides of it mm -hmm. because we're not living in a time where you can, you can continue to go forward and hope the best. Mm -hmm. It might not even be your child's gun or drugs. They could literally just be holding it for somebody. Sometimes people get bullied. Hey, take this. Hold on to it till I tell you I want it back. Mm -hmm. Or hold on to this and, and we'll be cool and we'll invite you to the party. Whatever may be going on, you know your child. So if your child starts acting different, becomes more secretive, that's going to strike some suspicion and also curiosity and concern. So when you have that type of concern, sometimes you could talk to them. But like, let's say that, okay, you're in a phase where you don't feel heard and seen here, whether it be from just growing old, whether it be from a disability, whether it be from you may be overweight, whether you may be underweight, whatever it is, you don't feel understood and, and seen and heard here. Plus, with your parents, you want to be cool to the people that you see most of the day. For the most part, when kids are in school, you see us, you see your parents on the weekend, maybe an hour or two before you go to school, and then when you come out, come back from school. You're spending eight hours with these people that you want to be your friends or you call your friends. So these, a lot of times, are the opinions and the ideas and the yeah, you're judgments that matter. by your by your peers because that's who you spend the most time with. And this isn't everyone, yeah. obviously, because, you know, some people don't give in to the peer pressure. You're one of those people that, like, were always a free thinker and did your own thing, moved to your I own know, I'm like, I can't even imagine just being right now. Yeah, but <laughs> a, a lot of people... They, they long for that acceptance. They mm -hmm. long for that belonging. They want friends. You were okay being by yourself, coming home. You did your karate. You did <laughs> after school. You come home, take a nap, and then you're going to do your homework. You can go to sleep. <laughs> a lot of kids like, I want somebody to talk to. I wish I had a brother. I wish I had a sibling. I wish I had more friends. And so they'll do those type of things. And once they get that acceptance for those friends, depending on the influence that those friends may do with them or do to them, they could take a turn. So I understand both sides of that because sometimes you have to do it to ensure the safety of your family and others. I guess y'all still nosy though. <laughs> <laughs> we nosy? Well, get out my house. How am I nosy? I remember you be like, oh yeah, we see Kim, she cussed all of her messages. Oh, you got my phone? Oh, no. That, <laughs> she was dating online and shit. Oh. And, Oh yeah, I remember that. in like yeah. fifth grade, yes, <laughs> nigga, I'm reading your messages. Talking to people on video games, on the video games, and the little messenger shit right there. Yeah, yeah. you almost got groomed, bro. Yeah, I did. Yes, you was almost ahead. Chris Hansen in our house. Come on in. Is that the predator? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's the whole predator. Yeah. predator dude. <laughs> who, who are you here to see? Yeah. Right. <laughs> who expected the seats? You want? We got some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but see, like, that just goes to show you, like, had mommy not done that, you could have potentially kept talking to this person. This person would be like, oh, you're in this city? Oh, I'm there too. Oh, you I lied that? about everything about myself on that game. That's okay. what y'all didn't know. I lied about everything. <laughs> okay. I said I was from Puerto Rico. What? Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I used Google Translate Spanish. Like, I was not telling the truth on that game. <laughs> Hilarious. Had that I going love on. that. I love that. But um also no. Um <laughs> but yeah, so I wanna I wanna hear the 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 things. Like is that an overbearing thing? Are we taking off doors? What we doing? Um I thought we were streaming this to people at first. I saw a little No, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> like, well, this is a good first episode. <laughs> um yeah, but this one um actually that story uh ran a bit long so uh, opinions and stuff rock out totally do um <laughs> so so leave uh answer the questions in the comments and we will see y'all next week actually let's give some more questions besides what fairy answered oh more in questions. this in this situation do you understand where the parents are coming from or do you think they're being way too overbearing and do you think the young lady is being groomed or are we just overreacting? Y'all want to? I want to hear a lot of that. Time. Put all your thoughts and comments in there because I want to know. Again, I see both sides of the fence, but honestly, I feel like this this young lady is way too young to be dating a twenty year old. All right, like he can get in a nightclub. She got to wait in the car in a car seat with. <laughs> 
With a juice box. With a binky and a juice box. Some goldfish. It's a goldfish. Some tiny socks. A little uh, Ziploc bag. <laughs> I would enjoy that. Oh my God, yes. So, okay. <laughs> Back to it. We'll see y'all next week. Thank you so much.